Hi everyone, my name is Nelly Mensa with SF Cryptocurrency Devs and today we have John Pacific, also known as Tux, from New Cypher with us. Hi John. Hey. How's it going? Pretty well. Awesome. So you're here with us, you just gave an awesome talk on New Cypher. Can you tell us a little bit about this project and what it's all about? Sure. So New Cypher is a uh, way for us to build uh, decentralized applications mm -hmm. that also sh uh, securely share data. Uh, so, for a quick example, uh, it's, well, essentially you might encrypt something and put it on IPFS, right. but it's hard to share that data. Yep. So with New Cypher, you are able to encrypt it once and distribute it as many times as needed mm -hmm. and grant and revoke access to that, to that data as needed. Perfect. Uh, so in short, New Cypher is a privacy layer for the blockchain. Excellent. So in your talk, you uh, mentioned proxy re-encryption, and that's one of the core technologies uh, that's powering the new project. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is? Sure. So proxy re-encryption is a form of asymmetric cryptography, where I'm sure uh, it's a, I'm sure maybe we're not familiar with, with uh, public key encryption. Uh, but essentially, you, Alice, say you have two people, Alice and Bob, mm -hmm. and they have their public key and private key pairs. And Alice wants to share data for Bob. Alice can encrypt this data with her own public key right. and share it with Bob by generating a re-encryption key, yep. which re-encrypts the ciphertext encrypted by Alice's public key for Bob's public key, where Bob can decrypt it with his own private key. Yep. So it allows access to data encrypted by Alice's keys. Awesome. So you mentioned one use case, which is uh, file sharing, right, and granting and revoking yep. access. Yep. Are there any other use cases that you're super excited about? Uh, yeah. So we have in the file sharing uh, space as well, like uh, we have medical data sharing, which yep. I'm really excited about, which will allow people to uh, grant access to their medical records to other people, yep. at, to like, like doctors as needed. Um, IoT devices, which I, I am very excited for. So uh, we can have devices that uh, can encrypt data under all their own individual public keys, but mm -hmm. grant access to a single person, for example, uh, health data uh, devices, yeah. uh, like heart monitors, uh, typically encrypt this data. And they don't really, uh, they just, just give it off as, as they want, really. Right. In this case, you would be able to encrypt it and once under their own keys, which yeah. you might control. And then you can share that to a doctor or another specialist if you want. Uh, so there's a whole ton of applications. Essentially, we call our system like a key management system. Yeah. Um, so it's a key management system for blo blockchain apps, sort yeah. of like AWS KMS yeah. or Google Cloud KMS. And that's really powerful, too. It's exceptionally powerful. Yeah. It's a very low-level primitive exactly. for developers. But then there are so many applications for it. And I love the mm -hmm. IoT um, overlap as well yes. with it. So when is this project launching? What's your timeline? Uh, so we're hopefully we're in active development right now. Awesome. Um, we're hoping to have testnet up within a month or two now, uh, and by then we'll be able to give more information on how people can participate okay. and maybe run testnet nodes of their own. Very cool. I think that'd be really interesting to yep. our audience as well. Oh yeah. So switching gears a little bit, how did you even get into this space? Right. This is very cryptography, sure. cryptography heavy. Um, and have you been a developer? Were you in you know in cryptography before, or how did you get started? So I was a software engineer at a company like my first engineering job yeah. and I had a coworker who was really into cryptography um, and I at the time I was really into privacy and, and right. like a f f like I was doing full disk encryption mm -hmm. I was only running GPL software and stuff like that right. uh, Snowden stuff had just happened a few years right. prior and so uh, really he sparked that interest in me or was on, on the math side of things right. And when I started getting that, I started reading papers and getting more and more into how the f a fundamental cryptography, cryptographic systems work. Right. Um, and I just started implementing and building those things. Um, and that's pretty much it. When I, you know, I've always been a follower of, of Bitcoin since 2010. Right. Yeah. So it's been like a, it's been pretty interesting. Yeah. So you pretty much kind of taught yourself, right? Yeah. You it's, a, it's a teach yourself. Yeah. It is a very much so a teach yourself thing. Many people go to college, but I dropped out. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> it is all a, the best ones do. <laughs> <laughs> so, any advice for folks who really want to get into crypto as a developer and maybe are not sure how to start? Uh, yeah. So, read papers. Yeah. Read the papers, uh, like the cryptography papers, right. not the papers, <laughs> um, and implement the crypto systems, yeah. and uh, maybe un try to understand the yeah. math and, and talk to other people and ask questions and that's go to the conferences, totally. uh, things like that. That's 
pretty much the only way to do it is just getting getting into the nitty gritty of it and doing Get it. Get your hands dirty. Yep. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, John. Follow John on Twitter. You're known as? At underscore underscore tux. There we go. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right.